While other men walked the dusty roads of history, Navy men turned their faces to a clean wind, challenging the sea to adventure and discovery. In conquering the sea, they conquered themselves, making courage and excellence a proud tradition. Then they looked up from the decks of their ships and conquered the sky, bringing the Navy into the world of flight. Naval aviators are a very special breed of men who have met the challenge of sea and sky. For in all the world, only a few have mastered the sky from the deck of a ship at sea. This is a classroom, the course Naval Aviation at Pensacola, Florida. 
So until you never uh, readjusted your attitude before you took that power off, so you just stayed slow the whole way. Okay. These students are practicing precision oh, landings. Meatball. Easy does it. Easy. Following a beam of light called the meatball, they aim for a 10-foot spot on the runway. One, two, four, two, one. As the LSO, or landing signal officer, their instructor talks them in on their approach and grades their performance. It is essential that they be proficient at these landings because soon, for the first time, the young pilots will land their planes aboard an aircraft carrier at sea. Watch the ball. small plane before, you know, except for, you know, the big bus in the sky, that was about it, and uh, just amazes me when I think, think back on it, you know, that now I'm flying, actually flying a jet. And you get up there, and you start thinking about what you used to think of as a kid, and there you are doing it, and it's really not something mystifying at all. I mean, it's something, uh, it's not like driving a car, but it's... Yeah, it takes work. I think uh, when you're on the ground, you feel kind of trapped. You ever felt that way? And, and every time you look around, you see something man has built. When you get upstairs, you go, hey, man, what he's built is real small compared to everything else. And it, and it gets smaller. So uh, I think sometimes, too, though, flying is, is a job, you know, like any other job. You get up there, and uh, there aren't regular hours to it. And like they say, flying is especially flying a jet, is nine-tenths boredom and one-tenth stark terror. Your mind kind of works like a computer. You plug all these things in. You really amaze yourself, because after a pass, you figure out, well, I was a little wide there, a little long in the groove, and uh, you figure out the corrections you make, and you plug them in, you know? It's like, I don't know anything about computers, but I assume that's what you do, you know? You plug in the very, you find out the variables, and what you need to make a good pass, you plug it in, you do it. Your mind works like a computer. It amazes me. And I'm sure most of us feel, or all of us feel, completely confident in it. There are a lot of things that we don't know about flying, but we no longer are scared by it, and we can just go out. This has been the first time I felt like I can just go out, hop in a bird, and feel completely comfortable, know what I'm doing every time. It could be something like an athlete trained for a race, couldn't it? He trains for weeks and weeks, maybe even months. All for one race, maybe even one a year at the most. And now tomorrow, that's that's our point. Maybe it'll only be 30 minutes worth of time. But like you said, during that time, you're going to be sick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're just going to have to, I well, mean, getting out to the boat isn't something that, there's that point, like he says, where you come around before you pick up the ball. And it's all pretty much just like it's been in training. And then once you pick up the ball, you got it. They didn't always fly jets. Although college graduates, they, like all young men entering the service, were subjected to those first few weeks of becoming accustomed to the military environment. This course is too different and almost... An officer indoctrination course prepared the student aviators for basic flight training. It is here they prove they had what it takes motivation, willpower, stamina, and the sincere desire to fly. This was the beginning.
evolutionary process of becoming naval aviators is continued at Softly Field. The busyness of the ready room reflected the anticipation of early flights. The countless briefs and debriefs never became routine as each successive flight grew more demanding. Like an athlete before a game, the young pilots spent their pre-flight hours in mental preparation, memorizing procedures and waiting. Time to solo, time to prove one's abilities to the instructor, but more importantly to oneself. It was during these early flights that the self-confidence was developed, which would prove so valuable throughout the young pilot's career. was the beginning. Now commissioned and flying jets, the students and their instructor get together at the club for an informal bowl session. It is a time to pay off pitchers of beer for poor practice landings, but also an opportunity to relate with a veteran carrier pilot. Let me, uh, that'd be kind of fun to see what you think of uh, carrier landings before and afterwards. So, uh, just let, let me know what, what some of your expectations are, you know, in going to meet the big steel hulk for the first time. What do you think, Steve? What do you, what's it going to feel like to get a cat shot for the first time? I'm going to be sweating. I'm going to be sweating the most as I roll over the shuttle, I think, you know. I'm going to really be sweating. And then, like you said, I think it's going to be an eternity between the time he, uh, he gives the go and, the, and that thing really does. I think once uh, I think once I get in the air, I'm going to be too preoccupied with procedures. Do you ever get kind of a tug on the wire and then all of a sudden it lets loose? Uh, only if you grab a wire and then uh, then the hook releases it. It's for example, you can the hook is right here, and if you caught the wire just on the on the middle part of it without getting underneath, it could pull the wire out and then have the hook slip off. And so that's that's the reason for the procedure of going 100% as soon as you feel un impact and staying there with a full power on the aircraft until you know that you're going to stop. But you're dealing in exceptions. You can't afford not to expect the exception to the rule. And that's the big, yeah, that's the big ticket. It's just like in, in any procedure, you're learning the procedure for the exception, not for the norm. Although you have not much control over it, things are going to happen real quick and it's going to shake your brains a little bit. The young pilots set out on their final practice landing session. Their performance now would determine whether they would fly to the carrier the next day.
still, I guess, two, two passes, you're still uh, a little late with your nose. Same as last time. First one was an okay fast start. Next one was a overshoot, a little not enough fire and close, and ended up a little fast high at the rim. Then the next one was fair, just a little fast all the way again, and a little late nose. And one thing that complicates it is the fact that you're flying a little fast, so it's harder to make a nose correction. And then Lee, <coughs> so he's going to be bouldering on the ship. Wave off, fast start, low at the ramp. And a fair pass, not enough straightaway, a little not enough power and close, and a little rough nose again. And then an okay pass, I can't remember what the start was like, but just at the last there, you one of these nose jobs again, where you pick your nose up and just a little over the top, right at the ramp, just enough to change from a three to a four wire. You're in good shape until you goof with that. I'm gonna see that uh, ball starting to fall or something. I'm trying to stop it. <clears throat> well, stop it with a a little less. You're just over controlling. Is what it amounts to. You're just moving it more than it needs to be moved. So everybody's feel qualified and ready to go to the ship. It's a piece of cake if you're smooth. <laughs> The plane stood ready as the sun burned off the early morning fog. Sixty miles out in the gulf, the carrier steamed toward the rendezvous. It would soon be time to go. The flight to the carrier would be the longest 60 miles the students had ever flown. Although they'd simulated scores of carrier landings before, there was something very different about this flight, something that could not be simulated in any training situation. The runway would now be only 500 feet long, moving through the water at 25 knots and subject to the rolling and pitching motions of the sea. This was the real thing and it was a flight that had been thought about many times before. This is the tenseness of hitting the boat. The, the unknown, the, uh, the variables that you haven't encountered before. The apprehension that you have is just sort of a, uh, a nebulous sort of a thing that you really don't put any, any actions to. It's just a tenseness an awareness that this is something new and different, something that might not work just like everything else you've done. 
But no, you don't. You don't think about. There's no fear. You're too busy. To get the feel of the deck, the first time would be a touch-and-go landing without the tail hook. Two wire, not bad for the first time. Landing completed, they would now move forward to their first launch from a steam catapult, which would literally throw them back in the air and into a series of landings that would soon become routine.
I didn't. Uh, I wouldn't ace the base out there. It was all right. It was okay. It really was. Where is the hardest landing was one back here. Uh, Jerry, you'd, uh, you'd pay 50 cents for that ride any time, any car, and you'd do it again and again and again. <laughs> I'll tell you, that arrest was really tough. Hey, reverse it. Reverse it for the game shot. Because you, you've been on arrest, right? Reverse it, man. That's okay. That's okay. Catch a piece of cake. Okay, I lost two bottles there because I didn't put my hook down. One of them. I heard somebody laughing, and all of a sudden it dawned on me. Before they could say, hey, that's not down, ha ha, you know. I heard my hook, and I faltered it anyway. <laughs> I mean, our plan God. landed with half flaps, and we went up there to debrief or something like that here. You're not going to change tonight, are you, Dave? Negative. All right. All right. We're all back, and happy it's over with. I'm sure you learned something out there. This is uh, this is what it's all about. And like you say, it is fast. Things happen very quickly out there, but as time passes, you will uh, get better and better and better at it. So the young pilots would have six more months of training before they received their Navy wings. But to them, this was the day they became naval aviators. <laughs>